The Victorian era differs a lot from our modern era, but it is surprising how similar we are to our Victorian ancestors. Many of the traditions we know nowadays, actually come from the Victorian era. Welcome to History Untold. Subscribe to our channel to support us. Longer life expectancies followed an increase in middle-class financial stability at the beginning of the 19th century. Early demises were now frequently viewed as a tragic occurrence deserving of a lavish memorial service. When Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Alfred, passed away, funeral and mourning traditions grew in popularity and usage. She entered a state of mourning after his death that would last the rest of her life and set a precedent that many British people adopted. Funeral traditions, and related superstitions, developed over the course of the century, but by the 1890s, they had been reduced to a set of social norms that were documented in specialized etiquette books. For wealthy families in the Victorian era, being seen and acting appropriately were more crucial than the grieving process itself. However, things were a little different for the lower classes. Many lower class families would save money due to the high death rate, especially among children, in order to ensure that their children would receive a respectable funeral. These families frequently went without basic necessities as a result because they refused to use the funeral proceeds for things like clothing, food, and housing. Because their children would starve to death, it was ironic that families were almost forced to use that money. So what traditions and superstitions did the Victorians actually practice when someone died? Let's take a look. Mourning clothes as a Victorian, you also had to wear specific clothes when someone passed away. Previously, people believed that wearing mourning attire was a reflection of their inner selves. The expectations of society were particularly distinct for women. Women dressed in deep mourning mostly in black, frequently with black crepe trim, and with little to no jewelry. A black silk weeping veil or widow's cap was another item widows had to wear. A woman entered half mourning after a predetermined amount of time, where hues like grey and lavender were acceptable with some decoration. Men wore only dark suits, black hatbands, cravats, and gloves, their attire was much simpler. Could you picture having to recall all that? Well, the Victorians didn't either. If they didn't know what to do, they could always turn to Castle's household guide. They also had quite a few superstitions, particularly concerning death, in addition to mourning customs and traditions. The rhyme threes a burying, fours a death was very popular in Victorian times. Since antibiotics had not yet been developed, Victorian doctors had to take any signs of death very seriously. The clock stopped, doing the laundry on Good Friday, breaking a mirror, putting boots on the table, a dog howling outside the sick person's house, a bird flying down the chimney, owls hooting, and there were quite a few other signs. A sign of death could be almost anything. Even in the modern era, some of these superstitions still exist, though they now refer to bad luck rather than actual death. After the daguerreotype was invented in 1839, some people began taking family pictures. The average family couldn't afford the price. Many individuals only snap pictures of important life events, such when a loved one passes away. As a result, taking pictures of departed loved ones has become customary. For the family, the picture served as a daily visual reminder of their lost loved one. Since children had the highest mortality rates, they were frequently photographed. Even if we no longer take family photos next to a dead body, forensics and pathology experts continue to perform post-mortem photography. Spirit Photography A picture of a dead corpse is one thing, but Americans were big fans of pictures of their loved one's spirits. They developed an interest in spirit photography as a means of getting in touch with the spirits of the dead. As you sat in front of the photographer, the ghosts of your deceased loved one would show up in the photos when they were developed. Keep in mind that this was produced before Photoshop existed. Quite creative, isn't it? Wild bird feathers could hold back a dying person. Wild bird feathers were widely thought to have medicinal properties in Victorian England. The terminally ill person should therefore be given the opportunity to die easy by having these removed from the mattress and pillows. In particular, pigeon feathers were thought to prevent death and by removing them, one displayed compassion for the person who was dying. Pigeon feathers were frequently placed under the pillow of a dying person to prevent them from passing away before a loved one arrived. When they got there, the feathers were taken off and death was allowed in. However, a doctor in the 1920s saw numerous instances of these procedures and thought it was murder. Even though we don't believe in the supernatural abilities of bird feathers, assisted dying is still a topic of debate. Telling the bees of a death in the household when a family member passed away, it was common practice to tell the bees in many parts of the country. If they didn't do this, the bees would supposedly either perish or fly away. 
every funeral ritual they had included the bees, and they even fed the bees when someone passed away. Actually sounds quite adorable. Folklore has it that Victorians thought bees symbolized the spirits of the dead. They thought that the living and the dead were intertwined and owed each other a duty of care. Touching a dead body stopped the person haunting you. It used to be traditional for friends, family, and neighbors to visit the deceased before the funeral before the chapel of rest became popular. A key part of this visiting ritual was visitors touching or even kissing the body. The extremely old notion that a murder victim will bleed when touched by the murderer may have had something to do with this. It was unquestionably believed in Victorian England that doing this kept the ghost of the departed from troubling one. It was also believed that if a body was wet and clammy to the touch, anyone present would pass away within a year in some parts of Cumberland. While they frequently found the touching itself to be unpleasant, time off from school and a special funeral cake were thought to be a special treat when people who were made to participate in this tradition as children were interviewed by historians. Drinking their sins away. On the day of the funeral, the mourners would gather for the procession to the chapel or the church. To mark the occasion, even the most impoverished individuals would try to have at least one bottle of port wine on hand. Additionally, they would offer their guests specially made funeral biscuits. When asked about this custom, a farmer in England said that it was carried out to help the dead enter heaven more quickly by drinking away their sins. What do you think of these Victorian mourning customs and superstitions? Do you recognize any of them within your own family? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you like more history videos.